Welcome back to Homegrown Passion. Well, today's going to be a work day here in the greenhouse, and hopefully we can get it all done. I want to get my beto buckets planted with the tomatoes. Doug's going to get the lights installed. I got some harvesting to do of the spinach. I got some baby cucumbers to take off and some general cleanup, some beto buckets to wash, and some seeding to get done. So it's going to be a jam-packed day, so hopefully we can get it all done. So I'm going to go ahead and take off the little cucumbers here. As you can tell, these plants are kind of little. And you'd want to take them off to give the plant more energy to grow up tall and to produce more fruit for you in the long run. And I let these get just maybe a little bit too big, but the reason being is these are the best tasting cucumbers when they're little like this. They're nice and sweet and crispy. So I grow two different types of green cucumbers here. This is the English cucumber, which is the traditional flavor, very mild. And now I'm growing an Asian one that grows just like the English, but it has more of a traditional outdoor grown cucumber flavor, so it's a little bit more flavorful. I tested both of these at the farm market last year, and a lot of people really like the Asian one better over the English one. So I know last year, Devin showed you how we pollinate tomatoes. We use an old electric toothbrush. It's getting kind of gungy, but it works really great. And we haven't changed this because I think it actually works better now that it's gotten all kinds of pollen and stuff on it. But we just turn it on and then you just touch it to the flowers and that's enough to pollinate them. And I'll go down this whole row and get everything pollinated. Then I'm going to go through and get these clipped up better. And then I've got some suckers here. This is a twin coming off that I've got to cut off and kind of clean up these clusters a little bit. We usually like to have two or three tomatoes per cluster, and so we usually cut them off, but this first round, I, I let them go a little bit and see if we can get three or four on there. If you put two or three on a cluster, it just makes the tomatoes bigger. I know we've shown this before in videos and you guys can go back and look in the library of them but I do get questions all the time about how to germinate spinach so I am doing another batch of spinach here it's um, March and I know I'll be able to get this growing through April and May before it's really bolts so I'm starting another batch here it's just a paper towel a little water with hydrogen peroxide in it cover it up with another plate leave it go for 36 hours and uh, then the radicals will come out and you'll be able to uh, plant them into your growing medium I'm going to have to get another towel on top of this. Hang on one second. Like before I said, make sure you have these all curled up over the edges. Otherwise, if they hang over, all the water will drip out and everything will dry out and they won't germinate for you. And like I said before, you want to wait till the radical, the white radical comes out, but you don't want to wait too long because if it gets, the radical gets too long and starts getting hairs on it, it's really hard to get it into the growing medium. So the hydrogen peroxide I use is just a store-bought, you know, 3% solution. Just dump like a teaspoon into a couple cups of water and just get the paper towels wet. So we use our control tunnel for germination. Obviously it contains all the controls for everything too, but we also have tables set up in here that we use for germination. Uh, when we get close to spring, we start taking the hot water boiler system offline. And so we don't have the real hot water running through the pipes anymore that usually heats us up in the winter time. So this year I'm going to install this real quick. It's a, uh, just a baseboard 220 volt heater and I'm going to put it right down here and that'll give us enough heat down here to keep this room 70 degrees. It's really insulated well and it should be good for germination. So this is the propagation table that we have right now and as you can see the the boiler pipes go right over the top of it which normally would keep this area really warm but now that we've kind of turned the boiler off um, it's not going to heat up as well. So this is Chinooku and those will go in the channels probably in another week. So I want to get this baseboard heater in real quick and heat this room back up. Okay, here's Kate. She's going to take these out 
put them in the nursery channel under the grow lights. So the Chinooku that I have here was seeded three days ago. It germinates really fast. You know, I cover them up with the black covers like I've shown you in the past. You just have to keep checking them. And like I said, you don't want to leave the black covers on too long because then they'll get spindly. So these guys are ready to come underneath the lights. In another couple hours, they'll be nice and green. So we had a few questions about the type of cultivar I use for the broccoli and cauliflower. So for the broccoli, it's green magic. And for the cauliflower, it's snow crown. First time I've used these, so I'm excited to see how they turn out. So I'm not really an expert on tomatoes. I mean, this is a whole science. People really get into this stuff. All I know is I take the suckers off and I keep training them up to the way I want them to go. So we use these, these vine crips, clips and then like on this cluster here usually I would take off these two tomatoes and I've got these little hangers here that we'll put on to kind of support it because once this gets big it'll pull down on that and we don't really want that to happen because it puts it'll actually break this right here and then your tomatoes will never get big so um, right now I just every couple days I'll go down through and pull these suckers off and then if we have anything that actually needs to be cut I'll use my clippers, which I clean in alcohol every night, and I'll remove any of those that we have to actually cut off. So it's just a matter of removing all the suckers and making sure that the plants start going the way we want them to go. Remember, these are all going to get lean and lowered and then wrapped around the beta buckets. So I'm trying to get them trained to do what, I'm, what I want them to do. So this is what I call a twin. This is actually the sucker. You can see that the tomatoes are coming off the main vine and here we have another cluster. So this one I want to remove. So I just cut it right there. No, I know it looks pretty drastic, but that actually is the way I want the tomato to grow. This you could actually stick in soil and get it to root. So I had some spinach today, four trays of it, that was in the area where Doug put the new lights up and I knew the spinach would bolt eventually, so I decided to harvest it all. And I can't believe it, I got 9.83 pounds off of four trays. So Doug's got his work cut out for him to put this all up for me. Okay. So we're going to be making lots of spinach noodles, lots of frozen spinach, and a lot of smoothies. Well, since Doug's out making the delivery for me, I thought I'd get these tomato plants planted. These ones I'm going to do a little bit differently because they're not quite as big as the other ones I've put in. As you can see, they're still nice and straight. So I can go ahead and use these covers that I get from Crop King. They're not too expensive. They're styrofoam and they work really good at keeping the algae out. Let me see. I think I'm going to have to go get a knife and get these uncovered. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Got a knife here. Get these opened up. So, like I said, these are really nice styrofoam covers. They come in sets, and they work really good at keeping the algae out. They're made for the beta buckets. And what's nice about them is that they have um, holes where you put the emitters into. So you can see, you know, see the plant goes into the round hole here, and then you can put your emitter here, and then it covers up the whole beta bucket. So let me get some planted, and you guys can watch and see how I try to do this. Oops. So usually what I like to do is kind of mark where the hole is, so I kind of know where to put the plant in. Drop them down in there. And you can put the covers on them. And they fit perfectly onto the beetles here. Gotta get it around Doug's pipe, but it'll work. There. So I'm just gonna go on down through and plan all these up, get the um, styrofoam covers on them, and Doug's gonna come back through and put the emitters on, and they'll be ready to go. So I already have the growing medium wet, so it's a little bit easier to work with. Let's see how nice these roots look. 
like these rapid rooters that do a really good job. And you're probably thinking the tomatoes don't look quite as green as they should be, which they don't because I've been watering them with the lettuce formula. So they will get onto the, um, the tomato formula here shortly. All nice and covered up, ready to go. For me to make things easier, I get everything staged, all the plants in each of the beto buckets and the lids there, and then I could just scoot on down with Doug's little rolly chair and plant them all at once. This makes it a little bit easier for me so I don't have to get up and down a bunch. So I'm gonna get planting. So yesterday I was a little curious to see how much the beans grow so at 1 45 p.m. yesterday I put this piece of tape on there and the top of the bean was below here and now it look how much it grew in just over a day well it's getting late and getting dark out so time for me to head up just doing a final check of the greenhouse here got some channels over here to wash from everything I harvest today for Yellowbird so as I'm walking up here and it's dark behind me it is so bright up here underneath the grow lights the tomatoes and everything's loving it so glad I got my other tomatoes in kind of makes me want to get a lounge chair out and sit underneath the lights here so please leave me any comments questions or suggestions down below and I'll see you guys next video have a good one